Mrs. Tabrika Muhammad Ali is an infection control officer at the National Rehabilitation Center. And I'm passing out to the stage to deliver the speech. Thank you very much for coming on board today and welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. It is a great pleasure to be here with you. Am I voice is clear? It is clear for you? Yes, yes. Okay, can I share the presentation or it's... Uh... Yes, you can. So today our topic will be about the improving patient safety in operation theater from the infection prevention uh, perspective. You see so many of the stories. Uh, the objective today identify hazards. Uh, I think there is, it's clear for you. You can hear me and see the slides. Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Welcome. So identify hazard that could potentially compromise patient care at operation theater. And what are the implementing pro, uh, proper control to reduce this risk and minimize the impact of hazards in operation theater? So let me start with the story of one of our patients. And this story was taken from Patient Safety Action Network. It's about one patient who had a uh, knee replacement uh, ended up with uh, uh, right leg removal. The story was told by his wife and uh, what is, uh, what is in, uh, interesting about this or, or what can uh, make us to feel that uh, patient safety is very important. This patient had 14 times to go to operation theater and finally he ended up with removing his leg. So let us imagine how is the family effect and the social uh, life uh, for him and his family about ending up with permanent disability. And also we can imagine the cost that they had to go for during his treatment and his uh, surgical complication. Uh, Grand View Hospital outbreak. This is one of the uh, outbreak that was shared by CDC, which is Center Disease Control that uh, surgical site infections, uh, and also it is a very important uh, to implement the infection control practices to avoid such complication. And the, in this study, they shared that, uh, they send a message for all the patients who had uh, the uh, surgery in this uh, hospital to go to, when they go to visit the healthcare providers, they have to report that they had a surgery in this hospital and they have to do the blood test and bacterial test. Here also we can see carbamine resistance to Demonis argonosa infection in Mexico, and this is by WHO where they investigated that there is an, uh, a problem or a poor practices regarding using, reusing equipment and borrow processing or sterilization techniques. And also they uh, asked the patient to report any uh, signs of surgical site infection. So from this outbreak and the patient story, we found that patient safety and operation theater environment is very important in regards to patient safety. By 2000, uh, in 2014, the, uh, there is a statistics from CDC that show that 14.2 million operative operation were, were performed in healthcare setting. And finally, what they found that 110, eight, um, uh, 800 surgical site infections were associated with surgery. So from this, we can see also the cost and the mortality rate is also high and associated with surgical site infections. So is the operation room is a safe environment for our patient? Let us see. From this study, uh, infection control in operation theater, they found there are a, a lot of elements that is important to contributing factor to the operation theater safety and design. We can see that the storage and the trial processing, uh, traffic control and storage and administrative areas are very important in uh, operation uh, theater designs contributing to infection control practices. So today we will talk about the pre-operative environment. And here I, can, I mentioned that we have, we'll tackle uh, four areas. 
uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning setting, traffic and operation theater, and environmental cleaning and surgical attire. I think I have an issue with the slides. Sorry about this. Uh, I cannot move the slide. Can you check maybe some of the setting or? Yes, um, I think you should be able to. Um, once yeah, yeah. Okay. You're fine now. Good. Yes. Very good. Okay. okay, so regarding the surgical attire, what we can see here, uh, Normal individuals shed more than, more than 10 million particles from their skin. And we can see here from these two pictures that you can see here the pole cover and uh, the uh, improper covering of the hair. And this is also will contribute to the microorganism present in the air in the operation theater. So what is our own recommendation regarding this? We have to wear a clean low lens surgical head cover with the hood, combine all the hair and combine scalp skin. And it also minimizes the microbial dispersers in the air. Head covers, what is the recommendation or what is happening now when we are going as an infection control to the operation theater, we can find that there is a non-compliance with, with the head covering. And we have an issue with that because dandruff increased bacterial presence and shedding. And what we have to do is completely cover and also we instruct the staff to have a treatment for the dandruff. Also, some of the skin condition also can pose a, a surgical side infection rate. So what we have to we have, we are instructing our line managers also to inform their staff to report and to keep an eye on this and to have a treatment and use the full cover. Place hood covers to be done first because when we are uh, instructing the staff how to wear the personal protective equipment or the surgical attire, they have first to wear the head cup to avoid contamination of the other uh, uh, attire or PPE. Why it is important? Because we know from many studies that the hair is a source of staphylococcus, which is a normal colonizer for our skin and hair. You can see from this picture, what is the proper surgical attire that should be worn in operation theater? And what we, in, uh, in for infection prevention, as when we go to operation theater, actually it is one of the critical area that needs, we need to keep eye on this because uh, operation theater is not accessible all the time for us. We are not doing a daily round for that. So we have to give a proper training and instruct the staff what are the proper surgical attire to be worn. As you can see here, it is a long sleeve combined and also the uh, the head it is a head cover is covering all the head face mask and the goggles and each one has an indication also the uh, the accessory that cannot be com contained within the scrub or the uh, surgical attire should not be worn shoes are clean and dedicated only for pre operative environment Personal item don't belong in operation theater. We know that many of the items that we are using, we're moving it from the office to the table to the tea room area. So these items are not belonging to operation theater as it is very difficult to be clean. And also uh, the pathogen can survive for a long time and it, it likes to survive in a plastic and fibrous. And also it will be transmitted from place to another place. Accessories and personal also clothing, it's not recommended to be worn in operation theater. What we have to do, if you are wearing the personal clothing, it should be combined and completely covered by the surgical attire. Also, the wearing of accessories increase bacterial counts. And there are many of the studies uh, uh, proved that uh, rings and um, uh, uh, 
bracelets uh, have a lot of the microorganisms that it is uh, colonized with. Removing watches and bracelets allow for more thorough hand washing. Scrubs and jacket in operation room. A facility approved to clean freshly laundered surgical attire should be done in a designated area. This is related to the design and operation theater. So the infection control recommendation always to have a, a specific dressing room at the entry of or reentry of the facility. If the scrubs are worn outside the institution should be changed when, when the staff are coming back to the operation theater. And we don't recommend, or the guidelines don't recommend home laundering for the surgical attire because there is no monitoring and we don't, we have the, uh, uh, inspection or the quality audit for that uh, area to make sure that the processing is done uh, properly. Non scrubbed personnel should wear long sleeve jackets on our button or snaps closed during the use. And also, what is important during an emergency, uh, what is we recommend to the staff in case of emergency and the surgeon wants to go out of the operation theater, they have to wear a coat and uh, attend the case. And when they come back, they have to change to a new surgical uh, attire. Moving to the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. What is the purpose of the heating, ventilation system or design? It is to maintain air quality, temperature, and humidity. And we know all that temperature and humidity in operation theater all over the hospital area is very important. This is for patient comfort and from infection control and the prevention, it is the increase in humidity. Uh, it also uh, encourage or uh, uh, promote the growth of fungal infections or fung uh, fungi uh, in general. Control odors and remove contaminated air from the uh, hospital environment, facilitate air handling requirements to, to protect susceptible staff and patient and visitors and minimize the risk of transmission of our bear, uh, airborne diseases or pathogens um, from infected patients. And as we know, during the, the pandemic, the air uh, conditioning or ventilation system is very important and it, it has it had played an important role when we uh, uh, instruct our uh, facility engineers to check how many air exchange we have, how is our uh, HVAC system, uh, working because during the pandemic, uh, we had uh, to have uh, uh, proper ventilation in our facilities. Air quality, and there are many issues that affect the uh, air quality in our facilities, such as decreased performance of healthcare um, facility, HVAC system, poor maintenance, filter insufficiency or uh, inefficiency and improper installation, accumulation of dust and moisture within the HVAC system. And these uh, factors actually, when only will be identified either when we have an outbreak or we are doing a site visit, a regular inspection, and also we have an overlook during the facility maintenance when they are um, uh, submitting the reports to the infection control to check for the air uh, quality testing. Air quality, um, the recommended air exchange required for operation theater is two air exchange per hour or more, or more than that. And at least four of them from out there, or we, they can call it in some of the literature, they call it 20% fresh air should be for operation theater. Air sampling, is it recommended or no? Many of the literature, actually, this is one of the area that it's still till now, it is under study. Outbreak, if we have a surgical side infection, uh, from our operation theater and we want to investigate what are the reason if we check all the elements or the practices and then we have to go to the air sampling to, to identify if there is a possible uh, transmission from the air. Possible renovation and construction or post renovation and construction. When we are doing a construction or a renovation in our operation theater to make sure that the filter and the design is working properly, we have to do an um, either air particle or air uh, sampling. And also we have the risk assessment. So actually in operation theater, there are multidisciplinary team. We have the facility um, uh, team and we have the safety team and we have the operation theater and the surgeons and the team leaders and the infection control also. So we have to sit together in one table and discuss what are the frequency we need to do in our uh, 
um, uh, operation theater to check the air quality. Uh, there is no certain recommendation, but it is based on our risk assessment. You want to do it quarterly, you want to do it every six months or yearly to check that uh, air quality is within the uh, normal limits. This is just to share that there are uh, still many of the unresolved issue associated with microbiological air sampling. As you can see, there are different methods of the uh, collection of um, um, air sampling, and there is also different interpretation. So we have to uh, follow uh, the manufacturer recommendation if we are using um, um, new technologies uh, for air sampling. So moving to the air quality strategies. Here we have to, as I mentioned already before, that engineering and rec manufacturing recommendations should be followed for preventive uh, engineering and optimal uh, performance of the filters, especially some of the uh, manufacturer will tell you you need to change it every six months. Some of them, they will tell you uh, within uh, one year. So we have to follow that. We have to put a policy how frequently we need to change it. How should be um, the facility department uh, or FMS facility management uh, Team, they have to uh, do the maintenance monitor area with the special ventilation requirement uh, using a manometer a week. For example, if we have an area with um, like operation theater, we have a positive pressure rooms, how frequently we have to check it. Like we need to do it daily or every shift according to um, our risk assessment and facility policy. Uh, we have to inspect the HIPAA filter. Uh, periodically to check uh, the mint as uh, we discussed before, remove the birds, roots, and nests near the air intake. And usually when we the infection control we, uh, team with the facility, they do walk around uh, uh, visit or site visit to go and check the uh, building and what are the infection or they do the uh, uh, annual risk assessment. So when they go these rounds, they identify what are the possible uh, risk that can affect the operation theater and uh, quality of the air. Prevent dust accumulation by cleaning air ducts, uh, grills. And now many technologies uh, and robots, they are available in the market that help to make the work easy for duct cleaning. Airflow and air pressure, what is the difference? In ORs, the design to the airflow should in the top of the room and is exhausted at the bottom of the room. Unidirectional to reduce the con contamination of the surgical field. So positive pressure, how we can monitor that? We usually teach the, uh, there are different either uh, to make it practical, we use the tissue test or we use the smoke test. What is available in the facility because not all the facility have the same resources. So the easiest one is using the tissue test when it is Coming at, uh, outward, that means the, there is a positive pressure and it is working properly. The frequency, how to test it, as I mentioned before, that risk assessment can be done if you want to do it every shift or it is once daily according to the fa facility policy. Temperature and the humidity. Cold, com uh, cold uh, temperature standards should be maintained 18 to 23 centigrade in sensitive uh, places such as operation theater which is uh, one of the uh, important factor to prevent surgical site infection. Warmer also temperature in other areas to improve the patient comfort is very important. And many of the devices we use it to warm the patient, especially after surgery, as they will have uh, shuffling. Humidity, mixture of water, vapor, and, and air. And what is the normal limit from 30% to 60%? We don't recommend more than 60% or it is not recommended because because of them, uncomfortable and also, as we mentioned, promote the fungal growth. So if we have a humidity issue in our operation theater, what we should do? Air sampling is one of the parameters for functional and um, uh, safe operation rooms, but it is not the only one. So we have to look for other uh, uh, possible um, actions that to identify what are the reasons for the uh, humidity issues in our facility. Sterile items should be removed immediately because we mentioned that increased humidity, increased uh, microbial growth. Standardized method of humidity monitoring to give uh, um, valid data and also to compare from our baseline. 
I share this dehumidifier. Actually, we had an issue with our operation theater. We had an uh, issue with the humidity. And uh, our facility department, they advise us to, advise us to use the dehumidifier. And the infection control committee, we uh, strongly didn't uh, uh, recommend this because this is only temporary solution, will not solve the problem. Um, um, will not solve the problem uh, permanently. And also there is an, uh, an issue with that. Pressure variance and disturb air flow patterns and like air conditioners draw air much closer to the ground. Also it will increase the circulating of contaminated air associated with the surgical side infections. Uh, excuse me, I need to move to just make the light or it is okay, am I okay with that? Is that okay or continue like that? Yes, that's or... fine. Okay, see here in the picture, we can see uh, different type of uh, hygrometer used to monitor the humidity in operation theater. And also here you can see different type of dehumidifier. As we mentioned, dehumidifier is not recommended because it will change the pressure variance. It will make, uh, uh, there is no uh, filtration of the air and also it will recirculate its contaminated air in the environment. So when we have an issue with the humidity, we have to do root cause analysis and try to find permanent solution that will, uh, uh, the, the advantage is more than the disadvantage. Laminar flow and uh, exhaust suits, if there is no data to support that there is a, a surgical site infection reduction, and here is the references that there is no um, uh, studies proof that it will reduce the surgical site. Although many of the uh, literature, when they uh, are talking about orthopedic surgery, they mention that laminar floor, floor uh, air is uh, recommended to reduce the, um, to make unidirectional and improve the uh, air quality. Food traffic and door openings. Here is the study done by uh, one of the literature for the cardiac surgery, they mentioned that uh, investigators noted 10 among uh, patients who developed SSI toward increased frequency of door openings. And it is one of the actually the best practices to control the door openings in operation theater and also to uh, reduce the personnel to a minimum number. Only the needed personnel should be inside the operation theater to minimize the microbial um, uh, load in, uh, in the air. So what we have to do if we have an issue with that, we have to coordinate supplies because we don't want our stuff every time to go and pick some items from outside. We have to prepare the area and prepare the items, all what is needed to be close to our access, no need to every time to open and go and uh, 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 reduce the door openings and uh, arrange the supplies. Actions when the heat and ventilation system actions are affected, what we have to do, reschedule or redirect procedure to the areas of surgery suit, uh, close the OT, and this is a very challenging decision because uh, we, uh, it is not the only infection preventionist or infection control team uh, decision, it is multidisciplinary team, delay elective surgeries, and limit the surgical to only procedure that is uh, like, like uh, uh, life-saving procedures. Moving to the environmental cleaning, what we have to know or what we have to do, how to evaluate the cleaning procedure. Is it sufficient enough to uh, uh, improve the patient safety, improve the cleaning practice in our facility? Terminal cleaning procedure, how is it in our evening and night? Is it the same like in the morning shift? All these uh, questions we have to uh, think about it and uh, evaluate it from infection control point. Are there sufficient stuff to terminally clean? Always we hear complaining that, especially now with the pandemic, we have a lot of stuff that uh, sometimes we have an exposure and the stuff are not enough. So what we are doing to manage this situation? So cleaning practices are often suboptimal. You can see here in the picture that over bit table before cleaning, you can see here the number and over bit table after the cleaning, it is spread more. 
So what was the issue? How it, it came like that? Either we have a poor trained housekeeping, they don't know how to do the proper cleaning. Do we have the proper disinfectant EBA approved they are using? Are they following the manufacturer recommendation in dilution and contact time? So the cleaning practices is not only just to clean it, is how to clean it and when to clean it. Daily cleaning of services near patient is often performed poorly. Unfortunately, when the infection preventionists, we go to the round, we found that the highly touched services is always there is a challenge and we found it dirty. Here, one of the study calling uh, found that only 47% of services targeted for terminal cleaning had been cleaned. So imagine that more than 60% or 50% is still not cleaned properly. So who should clean what? This is also one of the challenges. Sometimes when we go around, we ask the, our uh, housekeeping, did you clean this? It is not my responsibility. Then who is responsible for it? So infection preventionist has the important uh, role to identify the responsibility of each uh, uh, professional category in terms of the cleaning and disinfection. So our policy should be always continuous process or the cleaning should be continuous process Cleaning procedure involves the principle of infection prevention, which is uh, the following the best practices, cleaning from uh, uh, clean to dirty, following the manufacturer recommendations, uh, cleaning the standards, and frequently and accountably, we should define who cleans what and when and how. Cleaning schedule to cover all the areas and it should be documented. The key uh, factor for cleaning is use of friction. It is not the only gentle cleaning. We have to do the proper reflection to remove the microorganism and the price. And also we need to use the EBA approved disinfection and disinfectant and follow the manufacturer recommendation. Hot topic due to recent outbreak. This is one of the important element also the sterilization of an instrument and the cleaning and disinfection. It needs a lot of uh, uh, explanation, but I put this slide just for us uh, to remember that inspection of an instrument is also an important factor and especially this dedicated equipment. Sometimes it's very difficult to clean it, disassemble it, and there is a huge uh, kit that it is very difficult to clean it at the point of care. Point of care. So it is very important also for the um, uh, operation theater staff who is dealing with this instrument to clean it at the point of care, disassemble it to avoid an Outbreaks, free soaking and rinsing of uh, tissue blood and uh, blood from the instrument before sending it to decontamination. This is what I said already. It's about cleaning it at the point of care. The handling of COVID-19 in operation theater. This is one of the nice study. It is systematic review, and they found. They reviewed 30 articles regarding handling of uh, COVID-19 patient in operation theater. For infection preventionists, it is the same principle what we do in dealing with airborne diseases. We have a, a strict protocol how we do uh, if we have a uh, patient with airborne. But the difference here is how to transport the patient because the transmission of COVID-19, we know that um, it is faster than any other, uh, uh, like the TB. Handling COVID, and the, the, the first thing is all elective surgery and discobic, uh, and discobic cases should be postponed. We know that elective surgery during the pandemic, we stop all the elective surgery. And still till now, if we have in our country that there is a surge number of COVID, again, we reevaluate and do the risk assessment, and then we have to... Um, stop elective surgeries. Using of N95 mask or FFB2 mask, it is recommended, especially if we have a, that confirmed cases with uh, coronavirus that needs an emergent and, uh, or um, urgent surgery. And they are uh, preferring to use BPR or purified air, be uh, powdered air purified respirator for longer uh, operation because in 95 months it will not make the staff comfortable. Handling ventilator when they are um, uh, especially intubation and extubation is very important to uh, reduce the realization risk. The transfer from ward to OT, 
should be done by the war nurses when they are wearing full complete PPE. Minimize personnel, as we mentioned already in operation theater. In general, we have to keep only the needed stuff. Recovery in operation uh, room. So if the patient finished the surgery, we don't need to contaminate other area in operation theater. We recommend the two, or it is recommended to keep him or her in the uh, operation room itself till he uh, fully awake. If available, use portable HIPAA filter. And this is the HIPAA filter already. We know that it became one of the uh, important resources needed during a pandemic. Disinfecting personnel who should enter the operation theater should be only when we have the complete air circulation to remove infectious particles. This is also one of that, uh, the uh, screenshot I took it from the study that uh, uh, recommend operative complex to be divided in five zones. Uh, according to the facilities design, it is very difficult how to uh, redefine the area, but uh, it is also uh, one of the challenges that all the hospital in all over the world, they review the design of the hospital and keep an entry designated only for wearing the BPE and an exit room for removing the BPE and how to handle the COVID. Um, patients or dealing with the pandemic in general to reduce exposure and reduce the contamination. What is infection prevention role in, in pre-operative setting? Building a partnership with a pre-operative team because uh, infection preventionists, we need to be cooperative with our surgeon, with our uh, operation theater team in order to make the patient uh, safety a goal for all of us. Engaging surgeons and preoperative leader and the use of surgical site infection data to get their uh, support and uh, advocate to improve the patient safety using uh, validated or um, facts. Acting as a change agent and speak up when we see none or when we see none, uh, uh, none uh, compliance with infection control practices. Application of regulatory and accreditation requirements to preoperative care. Of course, here we have the uh, JCI, we have the Ministry of Health, we have the Department of Health, we have many uh, um, uh, requirements from our authority. We have to fulfill the requirements. We have to serve as a source for a problem investigation, risk mitigation, and also we follow the recommendations from um, uh, international or uh, evidence-based practices. Perform regular audit and share the result with the team using an approved checklist and education and training is one of the key areas for infection preventionists uh, to develop the team. Uh, this is just a sample uh, how we are doing the audit. Here you can see the environment, equipment and staff training. Many elements should be included and finally you will um, come with them. Overall compliance rate, what is the percentage? Share it with the team, make a uh, multidisciplinary team and work with the action plan together with the team. And this is my references. Thank you for listening and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tabrika Ali, for that um, a very, very um, educative and informa informative section. Yes. Um, you tried to telling us mostly about improving patient safety in operation theater environment. And, uh, and you've gone through so many stages within what we need to do with the, with the equipment and with the personnel as well. And just for us not to take much of your time, I don't want to repeat what you've already said, um, I'll just give two minutes for if anybody has got any um, questions or anything to add on and two minutes before we go on to the next speakers. Uh, we still have space where we can have a general speaker at the end of the conference, but we can give one or two minutes um, to anybody that needs to say something before um, we go to the next speaker. Um, you can put it on the chat and we can read that out. Alternatively, um, if you can raise your hand and we can... Um, really um, listening to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.